Hi, my name is Cameron Cope, and in this short video, I want to share with you my perspective on why most students struggle in school. Now, my background is in private math and science tutoring, and I've been doing that for about 10 years, and now I'm a distributor with TechnoTutor. And if you want to know what TechnoTutor is, go ahead and check out the links that I posted below. Now, in terms of my opinion and my perspective of why students struggle in school, it's actually a very simple reason. But first, consider your own experience in school. Remember when you were taking a test and you studied for the test and, you know, firstly you went to class and you learned the information or you received the information and perhaps you read the book. But when you found out the test was coming up, you studied and maybe you crammed, and then you took the test. Now ask yourself, how much did you remember? If you're like most people, chances are they didn't remember much, if anything, afterward. Now, maybe you retained some of it, but what about a year later, or two years, or five years? And if you're an adult watching this, how much do you remember about algebra, and how to add fractions, and calculus and your periodic table and balancing chemical equations and so forth. You don't you probably don't remember most much of it if you're like most people, unless of course you continued studying algebra or calculus. But for like most people you probably don't remember any of that. And this is why for many parents when a child starts struggling in school, they hire a personal and a private tutor. Because they don't remember any of it. Well, I'd like to share with you my perspective on why students struggle. It's actually very simple. See, when we're in school, in most schools, and even in most, but not all, homeschooling situations or alternative education situations, the focus is primarily upon basically two things. Learning facts, and basically memorizing facts, and then also what I call just basically how to solve problems. But I mean something very specific by that. And what I mean is, typically you're given a problem, you're shown how to do it, how to solve it, what's the process of the solution. And then the expectation is that you basically memorize that process and you can repeat it back when you're tested. Now the, the challenge I see with that approach, from both, both approaches really, which is memorizing facts but then also memorizing solutions to problems, is number one, there are many problems that I think for most people, if you look around at the world, you agree that there are problems that we as humanity face. Things like pollution and you know, overpopulation and uh, hunger around the world and poverty and disease and you know, basic things like that. War, for example. And many people have solutions, but at the end of the day, coming up with solutions for those problems is not like in school. because. The solution doesn't already exist. It hasn't already been done and applied, because if it had, the problem wouldn't exist. So in school, we're not actually taught how to think and solve problems and how to think about them. We're really just taught the steps to do and to memorize that. And the same thing goes with learning and memorizing facts. Um, historical dates, you know, what was Shady's Rebellion, who was involved, you know, who were the founding fathers. And, and these are basically facts that we learn, but the context and how to apply those facts to our lives and learn it and what I call integrate them. And it's not something I coined, but I like to refer to it as integration of these facts into concepts, into bigger um, understanding so that you can apply it. That doesn't really occur either in school. So what ends up happening is for most students, they're disempowered. Now, to go back a moment, that's the consequential outflow. That's the ch that's the problem I see in terms of that approach and how it plays out in the world. But the reason why the student struggles, which is really the question I wanted to answer, is because when you're learning the information, so regardless of whether you agree or, or we agree on whether we should have that approach within education, even if it was the right approach, the reason why students struggle within that is because even when you're trying to learn facts or trying to learn how the steps of solving a problem, the most basic fundamental things that allow you to understand the information in the first place, to even be able to memorize it or learn it, 
that's what you have to look at. And the building blocks of those things are words. And now that may seem almost obvious or almost too simple, but the fact is all information that we share and communicate as human beings is in some way words. And I get this a lot, you know, and being a math tutor, people ask me, well, what about mathematics? Well, four, five, right? These are words, right? And, and how do we learn math is through words and through reading and through communicating with each other. So at a fundamental basis, everything in this world is words, right? That have specific meaning. And it's through understanding those meanings and understanding those words and basically having those words within us that we're able to then understand the information we're learning, but also to understand each other and to understand ourselves. And just to kind of go off on a sort of tangent, but it's really actually relevant here, is um, communication problems that I see between parents and their children. Now, I'm not a parent myself. Um, I would like to be in the near future. However, I'm not a parent, but I have worked with many, many children. And I was fortunate growing up um, when I was 16, my parents had a baby. So I have a younger brother who's 16 and I got to be around, you know, obviously I didn't have to do all the work and everything, my parents did that, but I did get to be around a very young child growing up and being around that. And that was a great experience. Um, so again, it's, I'm not coming from a place of judgment or, you know, I know more than parents or anything like that. However, one of the things I see in terms of communication issues between parent and child is that I know that most parents would really like to be able to communicate with their child and it, what tends to happen is that we don't have the words to do that. And for example, if you wanted to explain to your child when they fell off the swing and hurt themselves, why they hurt themselves, because really it's just physics, you know, the child was too small and didn't know how to land and they jumped off the swing at the wrong speed and everything and they hit the ground and hurt themselves, but instead the mostly the parent and the child don't have the words to really understand all of that and the parent can't communicate it um, assuming the parent understands it because according to their education maybe they don't even understand but assuming they did it can be difficult to explain that to a child and what happens is the child will instead in most cases develop a fear of heights because that's the most obvious answer that comes to them instead of realizing it's not heights per se that's a problem it's simply the fact that you didn't understand all the physics involved and you know that's why the other child was able to jump off and land on their feet you know because they had an intuitive understanding and that's basically how it works you don't have to be afraid of heights right and there is sometimes a place to not jump off of certain things and some things you can and it just depends on the context but that's a discussion and a learning uh, opportunity that a parent can have with their child but of course most parents and i think if i was in that position i might say but how the heck am i going to get my five or six year old to understand all of that. Well, that goes back to the point of the words. If the child has the vocabulary and the words to understand what you're saying, problem solved, you know? And that doesn't mean you won't have to work with their emotions and their feelings and everything. It's not necessarily gonna be an immediate understanding. But being able to communicate by having those words both with parent and child will support effective communication and alleviate a lot of communication issues. I'm not saying it's 100% going to change everything right away. However, it, at a fundamental level, it will drastically improve. Now, you may be wondering, well, what does that mean? I mean, how do I teach a five-year-old child a bunch of words? Do I give them a dictionary? I mean, those are words. What do I do? Well, there are solutions for that. Technotutor is one of them. And probably in another video, I'll share my kind of journey or experience with being a tutor, a private tutor, a very successful private tutor working with the most, some of the most elite, powerful, wealthy families here in Houston, Texas. And my process of realizing that the solution really to most of the children's struggles in the school is not having a tutor, although having a tutor is great um, in the sense that it's another tool to use. There's no, nothing wrong with having someone as a mentor who can guide you through information and discuss it with you. And so there's no reason to uh, disparage tutoring or anything like that. However, the one thing tutoring can't do, and I could not do as a person, as a, as a human, is to put the words into the child's mind and into their physical memory in a way where they have it integrated. Where just like, for example, if you watch an athlete 
right, playing a sport, they've integrated that skill physically. They don't have to think about it anymore. And that's the major challenge that both private tutoring, tutors, and teachers face is that children can come into the classroom or into a tutoring lesson with all kinds of different levels of vocabulary. And so one of the things that tutors tend to do, and I developed a very high level of skill within myself, is being able to take the information and translate it in a way and in the vocabulary that makes sense to that individual person. And that's what made me a very good tutor because I really pushed myself um, beyond, you know, kind of my initially perceived limits to be able to develop my communication with that individual. And it's a feedback process and it's a process in time. And it can become very expensive. And depending on the type of tutor you, you have, it can be quite expensive actually. Now, the real point though is that it still doesn't address the fundamental point, which is the words and actually physically integrating it. Think of it like a computer, okay? If your computer is too slow, okay, like, so you wanna put a new piece of software on it and your computer's too slow, what do you do? Well, you have to upgrade the memory. And what the memory is actually, is you're just giving the computer more words. In a computer, the words are zeros and ones. So in our vocabulary, it's typically words and typically letters, and if you're English speaking, it's the Roman alphabet, right? But a computer uses zeros and ones, and they actually physically create circuits on the computer that are little switches, right? Like a light bulb. So whenever the switch is closed, that's a one because electricity can flow through it. And when the switch is open, that's a zero because electricity cannot flow through. And that's the basic vocabulary of a computer because if I, for example, wanted to communicate with you um, yes or no, I could make a, the light bulb turn off by opening the circuit, and that would mean no. And I could close it, the light bulb would turn on, that would mean yes. Now imagine if I had billions or millions or thousands of these circuits, the kind of complex things you could do and communicate. And that's what computers do, right? Humans are similar in the sense that our vocabulary is like these circuits and there's a way to learn information well let me back up there's there's a there's a way to learn information but then there's the best way to learn information okay now I'm not going to go into more detail in this video but maybe that's a little teaser to get you kind of interested and maybe a little bit curious about what am I talking about um, but again, I will put some links below so you can check out some things. And again, the one point, just to wrap up, what's the one point I would like people to take away from this video? Is that the re main reason why people struggle in school, or in learning really anything new, is not having in advance, or at the time when you're going to learn the information, the vocabulary to process that information. Just like a computer. If your computer is too slow or it doesn't have the processing capability, the new software will not work. It won't necessarily, it may run and you may get some result, but at the end of the day it may be very slow or it may not do the things that you want. So you have to upgrade your computer and there are ways, there are ways, and there are very specific technologies that are now available that will allow you to upgrade yourself to take yourself to the next level to be able to process information. And I'll probably do a video later on about why that's so important, especially in today's world and the information age that we live in, especially with all of the things that are changing in our economies and in terms of automation and so forth. So for the sake of brevity and keeping on topic, I'll leave that for another discussion. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.